All right. So let's, uh, I don't know why I never did this right after Piranha 3D, like two months ago, but I didn't get around to it for some reason. Piranha 3 Double D from 2012. Yeah, it was like two years after the original. The first movie, the remake, that we got from Alexander Aja. How the hell you say his name, man? I can't say it right. I say it three different ways. Whatever. I always cite that as an example of a remake done right. Like, of all the movies that we get that are remakes or requels or sequels, there's no originality anymore. There's, there is, but you got to look for it. But if you have to make remakes, just make remakes of movies that were bad because they didn't have a good budget or they just wasn't a good director or just any of that but had good ideas and a good story or a good script or something and bring those back and remake them and that's exactly what alexander aja did for piranha joe dante's piranha is not a good movie in my opinion <laughs> it's really not but this he took it that source material and the idea and he just turned it into an overboard like thrown everything at the wall crazy piranha movie and it works a hundred percent that's what they should be doing with remakes take the bad ones but had great ideas and remake them make them better don't fuck with the classics anymore but this sequel to uh alexander aja's remake it's not as good. It's nowhere near as good. I don't know what happened to the idea at the end of the first movie of having giant piranha that fly through the air and shit because Christopher Lloyd, who plays such a great role in both of these movies, with um, he ends up calling them at the end. Spoilers for that movie, but you shouldn't be watching this if you didn't see that. So whatever, it's on you. He ends up calling saying that those are the babies. And then a giant ass piranha comes out of the water, flies out of the water, and chomps uh, what's his name, Adam Scott, his head off. And then this movie, we don't see any any of that, nothing. We're just back to the regular sized piranha. This time it's in a water park, which is a great location <laughs> to have this all go down. It. I feel like they just don't. They didn't take it take advantage of it as much as they could have. Like, the whole setting of the water park. They could have, like, had some crazy ideas. Like, <laughs> piranhas, like, following people on the rides and shit. Like, like, I can think of a million ideas like that. But it is what it is. I mean, we have David Kushner in here, who's in so many comedies and stuff. He fits fine in here. Gary Busey's in this. Uh, David, <laughs> David Hasselhoff <laughs> is in this as a lifeguard. Christopher Lloyd, like I said. And uh, this, there's a whole bunch. Ving Rhames is in here. I ain't afraid of no damn water. <laughs> He's probably the best part of this movie. Like, Ving Rhames is just fantastic. So let's talk Piranha 3 Double D from 2012. This way I can say I did one or two monster fucking movies this month. So I like the whole news report we got at the beginning here with um, the woman saying that it's been a year pretty much exactly with all the people getting bitten, eaten by piranha, which I forgot if I even just missed the, the total amount of people that have died. But I'm sure if they say it, whatever it is, it looked so much more people in the first movie. It looked like hundreds of people were, were injured and or ripped to shreds at the end of the first movie. And that's, the piranha are supposed to be two million years extinct. So... This whole travesty of an event happened because of Piranha, who were two million years extinct, and ended up just eating the shit out of people in Lake Victoria. And it's going to happen again. <laughs> so we have Gary Busey and this old dude going into some lake nearby, Lake Victoria, I guess, and they find a cow, this corpse, and it's starting to, like, fart. Oh, well, don't fart on Grandma. She's trying to enjoy her ham out eggs of the piranha and then it does it again and explodes because Gary Busey's holding a lighter to it <laughs> and then all the piranha fall like into the water around them and just start eating them just bit by bit and all the gore as I can remember in this one is pretty much on par with the, the last movie like pretty much 
this is a type of film, I said it in the one for Piranha 3D, that you can go nuts with the CGI here. Like, this is just a blast of a movie. It's not supposed to be taken seriously at all. There's just tits and nudity and just piranhas eating motherfuckers everywhere. And at that, it succeeds, like, 100%. So it's a fun sequel. It's just nowhere near as good as the first one. <laughs> so I love Chet, the stepdad of Maddie. And Maddie, I forget the actress. Is it a something Bowden? Maybe I'm thinking wrong. But it wasn't. But I don't know. She's fucking gorgeous. But Chet, played by whatever his name, the guy who's in so many comedies. Forget his name already. I love his whole character here. He's just a complete scumbag. He just wants to make his money on his water park. And somebody has to know this, but I'm sh I almost guarantee the title for this movie started out as Piranha the Big Wet. And then they probably said no the studios and you have to change that and they changed it to three double d i could be wrong but just the whole name of the park being the big wet and the, we get you the wettest and all of that it just makes me think that they wanted to name this movie piranha the big wet and just didn't have their way i love when she asked them tell me you didn't like fire all our uh, lifeguards replace them with strippers it's like water certified strippers the cooch cam in the adult pool <laughs> This guy's depraved. Don't you hate in movies, like I do, at least, that whenever you have like a main girl coming back home, like Maddie just came home from grad school for the summer and stuff, and this is half, almost, her water park. He's got the edge on her because he's a dick with 51%. She has 49% in the company. So he makes all the decisions, unfortunately. But... When a main character comes home, and then there's always a douchebag cop that had a fling with them before they left, and then they come home, and they try to get with them again, and it, and they end up being a bigger dick than you can imagine from earlier in the movie. Like, you know what I'm talking about? I can't stand that. All right, it's killing me. This blonde chick. The friend of Maddie, what, is hanging out with her boyfriend. What do I know her from? You can't tell me because this ain't live, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's the actress from uh, Wilfred. Again, not true. With Elijah Wood. So some more of Maddie's friends, uh, Ashley and Travis, they go to to fuck in their van by the, the by the water. In a van down by the river. And they're praying for forgiveness that they're about to have premarital sex before they have it. I don't know. It's weird. And then they go to start having sex, and then stupidly they don't realize that <laughs> they didn't put the van or in park or some shit, and it just starts moving. And they're like, "Yeah, we're moving," and they don't freak out in time. And they the thing gets submerged, and the guy just gets eaten by piranha. <laughs> She's standing on the top of the van. I don't know why she couldn't bring him on top with him. Why? She just left him there to die. And then she, the other friend, the one that I think is the girl from Wilfred, she's with her boyfriend, and they were fucking around. She's like, stop it. Like, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I remember this. She has a fucking piranha, like, come out of her mouth or a pussy something, right? Like, a one of the baby piranha, like, swam up inside her. And then it comes out of her later. That's funny. So, piranha all over the place. The next morning, tits all over the place. <laughs> like, it's, it's really crazy. You got the big, like, Mexican-looking dude who's fucking the, uh, <laughs> the suction. Like, one of the vents, the suction vents for the pool. <laughs> That's so weird, man. And he's doing it in broad daylight. Everyone is around. <laughs> Nobody says to this guy, yo, you gotta stop that. You gotta get out of here. Like, nothing like that. <laughs> this guy's just pounding off of the pool next to a jet. And the guy's just like, hey, ha, funny, hey, you having a good time? All right, cool, it pieces out. I'm like, <laughs> so stupid. The blonde chick, she's, wor now they're worried because Ashley, the black chick with her boyfriend in the submerged van, they found the van, no bodies. So she's freaking out. She's like, yo, she's my best friend. She stole 11 of my boyfriends. Jane, you ignorant slut. <laughs> they're both fucking whores. Slut. And they're both bitches. So then, like, the dock almost breaks, and they end up getting a specimen of the piranha. And uh, Maddie's friend, who really likes her, who's in, like, competition mode with the douchebag cop, 
who like had a thing with her. So then they end up bringing this whole specimen to Christopher Lloyd, who just kills it, as always. And like he doesn't everything. Christopher Lloyd can't do wrong. Christopher Lloyd's video on YouTube has more hits than the laughing diarrhea baby. Whatever the hell that is. Barry, the guy who likes Maddie. Are you goddamn kidding me? The whole scene's cool. When he when Christopher Lloyd puts the galvanized steel like into the fish tank with the piranha that he had that was living. And then he takes the frog and puts it on the other side to show that they can burst through galvanized steel. And this guy, at the last moment, he reaches his hand in when the piranha breaks through the, the steel and shit. He's halfway through. He's about to bite this frog. And this guy reaches in to save the frog. And he says, well, I love frogs. Or like, he had a frog that died as a kid. How stupid that is. Now, of course, this is a stupid movie. And it's supposed to be out there and over the top in every way. And not make sense. This is just what I do. So, the whole tragedy could be avoided here. If they just shut down the water park, if they just don't open tomorrow, because they're saying to Christopher Lloyd here or something, they could get confused because the chlor uh, the chlorine in the water and the, the shocking of waters and backyard pools, which just gets a little bit heavy handed with like a message there, whatever. But then they end up, he wrote a book and lost a lot of credibility because he wrote a book about fish walking among us. And, like, the kid Barry, who likes Maddie, like, read the book. He's like, oh, I love that book. And he starts giving out copies and shit of his book. <laughs> He's so great, Christopher Lloyd, in this. But then they have to close... They have to race against time to when the water park opens tomorrow to check the drains and stuff to make sure that there's no piranha in there, that they can't get into the park, and that their park, like, drains into some other lake that's, like, 100,000 swimming pools. They can't, the cop there, he can't just go to the dickhead on, uh, stepdad and say, nope, sorry, you can't open. Boom. End of tragedy. <laughs> no issues, no one killed, no one eaten, no piranhas were harmed in the making of this movie. But that's not what happens, because <laughs> this is the dickhead guy has say all over everything, and guess, nope, I'm opening no matter what, nobody can stop me. Okay, cool. And the blonde chick, she ain't feeling well at all. And for some reason, tells her boyfriend, like, come over here, come inside me, come inside me. I'll do whatever you want after that and shit. And then this will be a cool scene. Again, I know how dumb this is, but <laughs> what can I tell you? The, again, another thing is, like, the stepdad, when she tries warning him and saying you, you can't open and everything like that. This guy's so blinded, I get it, by money and tits and everything like that. <laughs> Mostly just muddy, like dollar signs in the eyes. I could see if she came to him saying like, yo, there's going to be a an alien invasion. We have to close the park. And he'd be like, what the hell's wrong with you? Get out of here. You know what I mean? The fact that uh, just a year prior, right nearby, there was a fucking massacre of people by ancient piranha thought extinct. Right nearby here. That adds a little bit of credibility to her whole story, doesn't it? Like, it's like a, a whole alien thing comes out of left field and out of nowhere. The whole, we have to close down. There might be, remember those piranha from last year killed all those people? They might be making their ways into the drainage system and everything. They might get into the park. That doesn't make a little sense. I mean, that thing did happen a year ago. I mean, come on. This guy really just, like, ignores all of this yeah, so then he's mounting his girlfriend, the blonde girl, and right when he comes, she's like, something's wrong, and his dick gets bitten by the piranha inside her, and he pulls it out, and he's like, what the hell's on my dick? And he's like, and this is so stupid, we've seen these piranha rip up skin and people to shreds within seconds, yet this piranha is gripped onto his dick and doesn't bite it off instantly. It goes on for like 25 seconds, he's walking around, he's like holding, why is this here? And you see like a little of his dick with the thing hanging off of it, and then he goes and grabs a knife and he has to cut it, and cuts it, ah! I mean... <laughs> It's effective, man. It, it 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 hits you in the balls, of course, if you're a guy especially. But there's no way that thing didn't just bite his dick off immediately. There's no hanging around, like, for 25, 30 seconds. And then she steps on it, and, like, the tip of his penis <laughs> flies out of the piranha. Oh, this movie's funny. So then we have the stupid deputy dickhead. We find out he's getting paid by uh, the stepdad to let him do, do unlawful shit. Like, he has, like, an extra... 
well, a legal well and stuff to the park that he built. And this guy knows about it, so he's paying him off. And I get that sort of also plays into him being so arrogant. Well, I am the golden god of this place! I reign supreme! I! I! Not listening and opening the park no matter what, it's still fucking dumb. We have a nice little Nancy Thompson uh, bathtub between the legs shot. <laughs> like, like exactly like Nightmare on Elm Street. And she imagines like the little piranha like falling into the bathtub from the drain, uh, from the faucet. She starts like, wait a minute, just looking around, and then she realizes it's just a dream, and she's freaking out. And I don't remember if I told this short little story on the channel or if it was to a friend. But speaking of dicks getting bitten off, <laughs> the worst for me is from the movie Teeth. The Vagina Dentata, the scene when her stepbrother, spoilers for that movie if you haven't seen Teeth. If you haven't seen Teeth, go check that out. It's on, uh, pretty sure it's on Tubi. That's something I should uh, cover soon here. That is, that is insane, that film. But skip ahead. It's like 30 seconds. But when she, when she ends up finally, like, fucking her stepbrother, who's, like, been obsessed with her his whole life, and is just a complete douchebag, and he has the a vicious pet dog and she just goes in there fucking him just to use the, the, her pussy to bite the deck off <laughs> and then she stands up and it falls out of her and then the dog like he's just there the guy on the bed the stepbrother holding himself where his penis used to be and his dog goes to his dick and starts sniffing it around because what else can you think in that moment you're like please uh, maybe they can reattach it like that's the only thing you could think is maybe i can get this reattached and i don't have to kill myself so, so the dog though ends up just coming sniffing around he's like no no boy down boy and uh, then he just picks it up in his, and eats it and swallows it and he, the guy's reaction it kills me every single time he's like no no he's seen his dog eating his penis right in front of him uh, then he like coughs up like at the piercing that was <laughs> it's hard man it, that's hard for me to watch just from his reaction but now we got ving rames here which is great it just it saves the last half of this movie for me. I mean, and the naked chicks and stuff, but and the kills. I mean, this actually isn't too much worse than the first movie. It actually feels pretty much on par on this rewatch. I mean, it's definitely not as good as the last one, but it's not far underneath it. But I ain't afraid of no damn water. I can handle the water. <laughs> He's so great. Grab the handles, dump my ass in that water. Everything, every line he says. Don't listen to my pussy ass mouth. And then we have David Hasselhoff in here. No fucking reason at all. He's just here to be David Hasselhoff. And he's he's a lifeguard at the big wet here at the opening. Ironic. <laughs> David Hasselhoff is like dancing around, his music playing, he's just got all the girls around him, there's boobies everywhere thrown. <laughs> all over the place if you don't like boobs this movie's not for you but you already know that and because chet is an asshole and money hungry douchebag that's exactly what the piranha do they go into the park through the illegal sewer like drain and shit that he has into the park and then just mayhem ensues it's not as good the effects are not as good as the last movie for sure but they're still fine like, it's, it's a fucking piranha movie. It it looks great for what it's supposed to be. And then, like, David Hasselhoff has this weird bonding and connection with this young kid. <laughs> because his name is David, too, and that he doesn't know who he is. That he doesn't know that it's David Hasselhoff. So it's just some regular guy to this kid, and he just becomes enamored with him. It's so weird. Speaking of seeing dollar signs, can you imagine the lawsuits against this place? Could you imagine? Oh, I would love to have been at this park that day. And and nothing happened to me, though. <laughs> but I could claim something did. So, no, I was there. And just get in on the countersuit. Like, get in on the fucking just class action lawsuit against this place. 
And Ving Rhames has a, has a gun for a leg for some reason. He's shooting people left, uh, not people, <laughs> he's shooting piranha left and right. Uh, that David Hasselhoff, he keeps, it's a hilarious scene. He keeps hearing the cries of that kid David <laughs> that he's so enamored with. And he's like trying to ignore it. Uh, then he hears the call again, and the woman's there. She's like, aren't you going to do something? And then, like, it just it pans in on his face with the music, and then, like, he gets distracted again, and then it pans in on him again. Like, he's so funny, man. He's like, all right, all right, I got to go in there. You little ginger moron, he calls him. <laughs> Let me tell you something. David Hasselhoff's tits are jiggling more than any of the women in the park. And the Mexican dude who was fucking the jet earlier in the movie, he gets a piranha up his ass, and then Barry has to pull it out. <laughs> Chet's trying to leave with the money. He has just this box of money, and he walks past this, this girl with her dead, mutilated mother in front of her, and she's looking at him, like, and there's, there's no, no talking. She doesn't say anything, but the look she gives him is like, Mr. Why? Why did you let my mommy die? <laughs> That's like exact look that she's giving him and he feels bad and he walks over them but then he turns around and he, he makes it rain he throws a few dollar bills <laughs> and she picks it up looks at the single she's just looking at it that's hysterical and then he gets on like the little go-kart he tries getting out of there and a string of banners of ribbons decapitate him that is so stupid <laughs> dude it's literally like those birthday triangle banners that went severed his neck completely for his head to then fly off into a woman's hands and then throws it into a pool. That is so ridiculously dumb. <laughs> and then this pussy cop at the end here that she's Maddie's in the pool and she's trying to get out and like she's getting bitten here and there and he's just like holding on to her. He's, she's saying, "Pull me out." And he's sitting there. He's just like, "I I didn't know like Chet would promise me thirty five percent of the profits and like." I can't, oh, the blood, the blood, I can't do this, and he gets up and leaves her, and then Barry, the guy who likes her, he can't even fucking swim, he said this earlier, he dives into the pool after her, this, <laughs> this cop is, is a trip, <laughs> Barry has the, pla it's, it's plastic, it's like a baby <laughs> toy, almost, of the thing like Poseidon, Neptune holds, like the trident, and he throws this plastic trident down into the water and it perfectly hits the piranha right through the face as it's about to hit Maddie. <laughs> this movie's ridiculous. And then Barry and Maddie get to share an amazing kiss between lovers. I mean, technically he's giving her mouth to mouth. <laughs> but still, that's how it's filmed. And then she wakes up and comes out of, you know, she's conscious, looks at him, and then they start making out heavily, and there's literally live piranha right next to them. <laughs> like, they're not in water, but we've seen these things. They can flop around. There's no urgency. Let's just make out right by all the piranha. They're just hanging out there. <laughs> we get these crazy, just like, over dramatic shots of the cop, Kyle, <laughs> where he's just like... <sighs> Like, like he's fighting with himself, like, go save a life, save somebody. And he starts picking up the woman's corpse, yo. Know, this thing is shredding, it's just bones and stuff. And he's like, I need a medic. <laughs> Man, this is funny. I, I forgot how funny this one is. <laughs> this is great. And then they blow up the fish. That Mexican dude puts something in my imagine. Blew up, like, through the drains and stuff. All it's raining piranha guts and stuff. Everyone's happy, glad, great day, end of day. <laughs> and then they get the call, just like in the last movie, from Christopher Lloyd. And he says they are learning to walk. And then Maddie's like, I know. Which, is, I don't know how she knows, because it didn't walk yet. It, that piranha's sitting right the fuck in the water. So I don't know how she knew when he said that. Because then it starts moving a little bit. And then little David, David Hasselhoff's little friend, he runs in and wants to take a picture. He's all like taking it. And they're shouting. And he's like, get away from that thing. His mom's screaming. He's like, they're slow on land, mom. And then it just jumps and decapitates him. <gasps> Bites his head right off. And then we get this line from Hasselhoff, who just looks at the camera. He's looking over there. He's like, little ginger moron. And it just ends. So much fun. Such a fun com uh, companion 
film to the uh, 2010 one. So another monster movie. We got like two or three out this month, so we're good on the theme. Mm-hmm. 